Hey, data engineers, data scientists, uh, folks looking to do software engineering. This is Will from growthtested.com, from machinelavas.com. Uh, I'm here today to start learning a new language. Um, I am going to be focused on Rust, and I'll get into a little bit about why, but what I'm going to be doing in this video and maybe series of videos is starting to walk through uh, learning Rust from the standpoint of somebody who has done a bit of software engineering and is looking to find a new language. So if that interests you, if you're looking to learn Rust, if you don't want to just go over the very basics, if if maybe you want a, a little introduction that's a bit more advanced, uh, then stick around and watch this series. And uh, let's dive into Rust. I'm excited about it. Okay, so if you follow along in this channel at all, then you'll know that I'm really a Python person, have been a Python person for a long time. I'm going to continue with Python. I'm going to continue the series on learning Python, intermediate Python. Stick around on that. But I've also been interested in, in expanding my horizons and think more broadly. And with another programming language, you, you start to, you're forced to think about problems differently. Um, you see the perspective that other developers have taken in solving common problems. Uh, Rust is a relatively new language. I think it was only invented a couple of years ago. Python, on the other hand, was invented uh, in the 1990s. Um, and other very popular languages were invented in the you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, well before the millennium. Rust is a new language. And uh, what you see here is the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. You can see that it's uh, one of the most, in in this survey, and for the fourth year in a row, Rust is the most loved programming language among our respondents. So it's a software engineers, software developers, programming language, even though it's not very widely used yet. Um, it's a language that software developers say that they really enjoy writing in. And um, I think it has a very bright future. It's seen as a potential replacement for C++. That will take a while because C++ is well embedded in, in many enterprise systems. Uh, I don't want to learn or have to learn Java or C++. I've heard so many horror stories, but I do want uh, to do some systems programming um, maybe even potentially in this series, make a game, do other things that you would use this kind of language for that Python, um, is just too slow for this kind of overhead, even though there are things like Pygame, game, um, but a language empowering everyone to build reliable and efficient software. So you can read more about rust. You can install it. Um, and I'm excited to see right now Rust Conf is going on. I'm excited to see the kinds of things. There is one very, um, you can check out this. Okay, so there's this one game that looks very interesting that's developed, being developed in Rust. Uh, there's a Patreon for it and a Reddit community around it called CityBound and it's interactions of millions of individuals. Now, I just don't think that Python could handle something like this. Maybe it could. Um, but I think, I, I just think it's probably healthy as a software engineer to broaden your horizons with different kinds of language and different kinds of ways of approaching problems. Um, so you, sh you could check out this, this project looks really neat city bound. It's just, uh, the organism of a city anyway. So in this, this series, I'm going to be diving into rust. I have it installed. What I'm going to be doing is not following along in the official guide, um, I'm going to be doing the the rustlings course is what it's called. Um, and what this is, is just a, a way to get into rust by working through uh, fixing up programs that are being uh, caught with compile errors from from tests that they that they've written for this course. Um, so uh, clone this, install rust, and then we'll dive into it uh, right now. Okay, so once you get this set up, um, what you'll see here is this is the the wrestling's course, and 
this will should get us into um, should get us into Rust. Let's try and see if we can see if we have a Rust version. I believe it is. No, maybe just Rust version. No, Rust up. Okay, so Rust up version is that going to work? No. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Rust up dash dash version. So I am working with. Uh, 1.18. So what's also neat is Rust is very young still. So there's a lot to do. You can make a really big impact with the community um, that you just won't be able to do with the more established languages. Uh, so it's it's still very young, very early days for Rust. Very exciting uh, to be able to um, see all of the debates about what a language can be. All right, so we have 1.18 Rust. We have Rustlings here. Okay, so let's see what our first moves are. I believe we're going to do Rustlings Watch. Okay, so Rustlings Watch is given us uh, this compilation error. And we could see it's in exercises. Um, variables variables one okay so here we are this is the first um this is the first exercise and we can see that uh the the solution is to make me compile scroll down for hints so let's just walk through some of these so there's hints at the bottom um so what we need to do it's missing a keyword that is needed in Rust to create a new variable binding. Okay, so we need to say let. Okay, and then let's run. It's compiling down there below. And so that passed um, successfully compiled exercise variable one. So we got the first one to compile. So that's great. So then we move on to exercise two. Another um, some Rust code, uh, a main function, and then the goal here is, to, again, to make this compile. So let's see what this needs. And what's nice is, for more information about the error, you could try Rust uh, C dash dash explain EO282. So this, um, let's see. T -t 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 rust already or at least this rustlings course is just very user friendly it's very easy to dive in i did that wrong but we can see um <clears throat> the error that we encountered here so it indicates that the type inference did not result in one unique possible type okay so um Make me compile, let's see the hint. Okay, so we need to get this, a type annotation. So I believe it's, we want to assign this an unsigned integer variable. Um, let me just say, if I do that, I32, and then I go back So what I'm doing here in Rust that I didn't wouldn't need to do in Python is assign a type so that my errors are caught at compile time and not uh, during the execution of the program. Okay, so one, two is still failed. So let x i32. Okay, so I had to assign a a type integer thirty two to uh, to x, and then I assigned x to ten, um, and then I completed compiled exercises variables too. Um, so there are different types. Uh, I'd imagine there's a bool type, and this won't compile if I assign ten to a bool. 
that's right. So expected expected bool and found integer, right? So if this should be true. Let's try that. Let's see if that compiles. So that's violating the spirit here, but um, oh, okay. So that didn't work. We can set this back to integer unsigned integer 32. I believe the unsigned means that uh, it can't be negative. All right, and then we move on to variables three. So let's just finish out this variable section. And then you can follow along by downloading the uh, wrestling's course and, and doing this on your own. So let's see, I uh, cannot assign twice to immutable variable. So we want to let this variable be mutable. So we use that keyword uh, mute. So let mute. Um, let me look at the hint keyword. There's a keyword. I believe it's that. Exercise three compiled. So now we're on to exercise four. So we're just blazing through these here. All right. So let's see. Now um, borrow of possibly uninitialized variable x. So i32 print number. So I think we have to. I think we have to give that a, um, we had to assign a number to that. So we just finished, uh, I, now we're on the if statements. So now we just go over to the if statement. So what have we learned thus far about, um, about Rust? We just blazed through uh, the variables piece of the wrestling's course and we saw some Rust code. I didn't even pay too much attention to it, but there's a, a, a main function in every one of these files that we um, that we modified. We um, assigned variables. We said some of these variables are mutable, some are not mutable. Um, and then you can see uh, the print line function. So just some basic introductory steps to Rust. Hopefully this will get you started if you're interested in, in starting Rust. Uh, I'm going to keep going with this. Let me know in the comments if this is helpful, if you want to see me keep going with this. I think um, I might get started with the game, so if you're interested in seeing that, uh, let me know in the comments, or if you just want me to get back to Python, let me know that too. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, we'll catch you later.